Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. We are going to do some winter canning today. So this is kind of how I run my canning operation. I can a lot of tomatoes and um, did not get too many this year. Um, this is just the extra. I've got some on the shelf, some down in here in the bottom. Uh, but I try not to do a lot of canning during the summer because it's already hot outside and I just don't want to run you know, big pot of steaming water uh, just to make it even hotter and more humid in the house. So what I like to do is just put my extra uh, tomatoes, put them in the freezer, and then when I'm ready and usually sometime when it's nice and cold outside, I'll take these and I will um, stew them and then I'll run them through the sieve and then I will uh, can them. So the first step of the process, we're actually just going to take these out and begin to let them thaw. Um, I will catch up with you after a while. Okay, so the next step in the process is to defrost these tomatoes. So either you could just let them sit at room temperature if you have plenty of time, or you can just defrost them in the microwave. We are going to defrost them in the microwave. So I'm just going to take the bowl, put it in here, and hit the defrost. All right, so those are gonna be in there for a while. Um, in the meantime, and, and I can do these in batches, um, over here I do have uh, some of my equipment set up. So I have my KitchenAid set up with the grinder, and I have my sieve and my dibble, and I have um, the container to collect the juice. And so this sieve will actually uh, filter out the skins and the seeds. So it's a little bit easier than having to scald and peel all your tomatoes. So um, I find that this is more um, effective with time to do it this way. And there are many ways of doing it, but this is just my preference. Um, and then I will cook the sauce down. And what this will be is the basis for anything that I wish to make, whether it's pasta sauce, pizza sauce, salsa, um, tomatoes in, in the chili, what have you. It's just going to be tomatoes. I'm going to can in pints and I'm going to can them in my little Presto pots. Um, I, I really prefer the weighted dials on these type of pressure cookers. And actually this isn't a, a Presto, this is a Miro. Um, anyway, you can do four pints in each one of these. So um, when you can tomatoes, you don't necessarily have to put them in the pressure cooker. You can do a water bath. My preference is the pressure cooker. Um, I find that it just it, it's easier. And plus, I don't have to drag my big old water, water bath canner uh, down. I've got it put up in a high place. Um, usually, you add some salt to your things, and um, this is the little funnel for filling it. It looks like it's been through a couple wars here. It's pretty beat up. That was probably my mom's actually, come to think about it. So, anyhow, um, I'm going to do some other chores while waiting on those to defrost. And while those are, when that batch is done defrosting, I can actually start grinding them while the others are in the microwave defrosting. So, this is one of those things that you can spend a little bit of time doing it now. And, and then in the in-between, you can work on some other chores. All right, have a great afternoon, and I will check back in with you in a few. Okay, so these have defrosted. We're going to take these out. And I need to add that these were actually washed before I put them in the freezer. And we're going to take these over here to the KitchenAid. And we can actually just grind these. Uh, but some of the tomatoes do have a bad spot. And those that have a, a bad spot, I'm uh, going to cut that out and put it in the chicken scrap bucket over here um, before I grind it. Because obviously I don't want to grind anything that's rotten into it. Um, but again, all the seeds and skins and stems will stay in the sieve. Uh, when this gets full, I'll uh, put the dibble in and grind it around and the juice and the pulp will actually go through into the container. So let's go ahead and get started.
not sure why this is stopping spinning. So you guys get the picture. I'll go ahead and finish grinding these up and then I'll catch you guys later. Okay, welcome back. I have ground down all the tomatoes. I have cooked the sauce down a little bit. I don't know if you could see down in here. Uh, the level was up to here. I cooked it down so it would be thicker, get some of that water cooked out. I have preheated my jars in the dishwasher. I'm getting ready to fill them. I will add a little bit of salt. And then over here, I have my pressure pressure cookers heating up with water and I have my lids and rings soaking in hot water. So I'm going to get this put together and then I'll check back in with you in a few. Okay, welcome back. I have filled the jars up. I have put the preheated lids and rings on and now I'm getting ready to close the pressure cookers. put the weighted gauge on 10. Okay, that's it. Once they start jigging around, I will turn the heat down and we'll let those cook for a while. Check back in with you. So we have the pressure cookers going. And we're going to let these process for a while. And then I've got more lids getting warm, warm here. I have another batch to process after this. Good evening. This is the final step in canning the tomato juice. Um, I will actually need to remove the bands. And then I need to wash the sides of the jars. I don't know if you can see this or not, with this white film. We have hard water here, we're on a well. Um, so anyhow, I have to wash that and get this hard water deposit off and then I will label with my permanent marker on the lid um, the month and the year that this was canned. And that's it. So, from that stash of tomatoes that I had in my freezer, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pints of tomato sauce. And this tomato sauce is useful for making soup. You can make chili with it. You could cook it down a little bit, thicken it up, and make pasta sauce. Just add some spices to it. You can make pizza sauce. Um, and I suppose if you really wanted to, you could uh, make some salsa out of it. Although this is, uh, this is pretty runny. Um, I mean, it's thick once you shake it up, but it's nowhere near the consistency of salsa. But you can cook it down. The possibilities, um, there's quite a few of them, and this is a very flexible item to have in your pantry. Um, you can create lots of different meals with it. And uh, really, this cost me, um, the lids were about five cents a piece, so where are we talking 11 times five, 55 cents for the lids, and these rings are reusable, the jars are reusable. Um, I've picked up the jars over the year, um, over the years from yard sales. People have given them to me. This old house, um, the basement or the, uh, the creepy cellar was full of canning jars. I just had to go down in there and clean it out. Um, so anyway, um, 
And this is also great for all of you that are interested in zero waste um, because really when it's all said and done, the only thing that you're left with is this lid. You can reuse it for other purposes, like if you wanted to use these jars for food storage in the fridge, you can reuse the lid, or you can pitch them in the recycle bin. So, all right, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.